In the previous videos, I created my Relay Adder, Logic Block, and Multiplexer, the three elements I needed to create my ALU. All of these circuits implement combinational logic. That means that the output states of the circuits depend only on the input states. Provide the same input bits, and you'll get the same output bits. But to build a computer, I also need to implement sequential logic. In sequential logic, the output depends not only on the input bits, but also on what happened previously. Sequential circuits have a memory, and we can take advantage of that for my next circuit design, the computer's memory registers. A register is a small chunk of computer memory, directly connected to the ALU and typically separate from the machine's main memory. Here's an example of how a relay can be used to store information. We'll connect a relay's armature to a constant power source, and wire its normally open terminal back to its own coil. When the relay is turned on by an external signal, the armature makes contact with the normally open terminal, creating a feedback loop that provides power to its own coil. When the signal turns off again, the feedback loop remains and the relay stays on. This is called a latch or latching relay. Turning the input signal on or off again has no effect on the relay's state. But to store data, we need to be able to turn a latch on and off. To do that, we can add a second relay. We'll call the latch relay's input set and the other relay's input reset. We'll make the same feedback loop as before, except this time, the loop passes through the reset relay's normally closed terminal. When the set signal goes high, the feedback loop is activated and the relay latches on as before. When the reset signal goes high, the feedback loop is broken and the latch turns off. There's another issue we have to solve regarding how data is represented by signals in the computer. In my computer, a 1 is represented by a positive 5 volt signal, and a 0 is represented by no signal. That means that if we want to store a 0, we need some way to trigger the reset relay that can respond to a lack of a signal. We can do that by adding a third relay, which I'll call the translator because it translates a 1 or a 0 into a set or reset signal by connecting its normally closed terminal to the reset relay and its normally open terminal to the set relay. There's one more item that we need to deal with. We only want to change the state of the latch when we're ready to write a value. To indicate that, we'll connect the translator relay's armature to an input signal called enable. When enable is on, either the set or reset relays will be triggered depending on whether the incoming data bit is a one or a zero. When I first started thinking about building a relay computer, this was the design I came up with for a memory register. It's pretty straightforward and it does work, but it's really inefficient. It needs three relays just to store a single bit. Storing an 8-bit byte would require 24 relays, and I want to have at least three 16-bit registers. We can solve this problem with sequencing. Sequencing is when we design a machine that ensures that certain operations will always occur in a certain order. In the case of my memory registers, I want to guarantee that before storing a new value, the entire registers will always be reset to all zeros. This has a lot of advantages. We no longer need the translator relay. Instead, we can feed the data signal directly to the set relay. Since we know the register will be all zeros before we try to store data, if the incoming data is a zero, nothing changes. If it's a one, the latch will be turned on. We also no longer need a reset relay for every latch. Instead, we'll replace the latch's constant power source with a common reset signal, shared by all the latches. That signal is on by default, but when it turns off, all the feedback loops will be interrupted, resetting the entire register to zero. We're back to single relay latches at the expense of some speed. That's an acceptable compromise in my book. 
Here's the PCB design for the 8-bit register board. I'll use two of these chained together to make a 16-bit register. The eight relays on the left are the latches. Each one has a feedback loop connecting one of its normally open terminals back to its own coil. The ninth relay on the right is the common reset. Its normally closed terminal is connected to power and its armature connected to the armatures on all the latches. That's the common reset signal. When the board's reset input is brought high, the reset relay turns on, interrupting the feedback loop of any latch that was turned on, and resetting the whole register to all zeros. The four relays on the bottom allow the latches to be connected to or disconnected from the main bus. Each of the eight normally open terminals on the bus interface connect to one of the latch coils. The board's eight inputs are connected to the bus interface's eight armatures. When the bus interface is brought high, those relays turn on, allowing the latches to read data from or write data to the main bus. Importantly, the reset input bypasses the bus interface, allowing the register to be cleared to all zeros before trying to read data. Here's a simple test of the register board. The eight buttons on the left are connected to the register's eight latch inputs. The two buttons on the right are connected to the bus interface and the common reset. 
I should only be able to latch a relay when the bus interface is active and the button for the latch is pressed at the same time. I now have the four things I need to make a real computer. An adder, a logic block, a multiplexer, and a memory register. The next step is to put them all together, build a main bus, and start running actual programs. Stay tuned for that in upcoming videos. In the meantime, if you're interested in the design for this register, check the description for the link to Dr. Harry Porter's paper and videos on his relay computer. His register design directly influenced mine. Until next time, thanks for watching.